Hey everybody, today I'm going to talk about how I built these overhead cabinets. Um, and they're actually kind of more like shelves, they don't have doors on the front. But these are mounted on the wall, and then we just keep our clothes in these little uh, soft box basket things. And it works great. This front piece here comes up a little bit higher than the floor so that these will not go flying out of here when we drive around a corner. We rounded these with a router so that when you reach in here, you're not hitting a sharp edge with your hands. Basically, these are built out of one by twos. At Lowe's or at Home Depot, you can find some real nice quality one by two. It's not like the standard construction one by twos you would find with two by fours and two by sixes and that sort of thing. This is a better quality. I think it's Hemlock. Um, and this is just a scrap, but these come in four, four feet, six feet, eight foot lengths. Right here is the framework for the next one that's going to go up back here. And basically, you can see I've got a four foot length on each side. To figure out the length of these long pieces was pretty simple. To figure out how to cut these pieces was a little bit different. As you know, nothing in a van is square, so I couldn't just measure straight from the ceiling I wouldn't know where I was measuring to so what I came up with was this string I got brackets right where these are going to be mounted and the string is going right to that bracket there's also another bracket at the exact same height on the other side of the van and so this here is my level for the bottom portion of the shelf then I also have the bracket on the top that's going to hold the the front panel and here's my vertical string so all I need to do then is measure along this string from the wall to where this vertical string is and that's my measurement and then the same thing here going the other direction and then then I just subtract the width of this piece one and a half inches and the width of this piece one and a half inches that's three inches and boom I, there's my measurement to get these cross pieces in very good and strong I got a hold of a pocket hole jig and I drilled these holes here to put screws in and so the screws are kind of recessed back in there so these pieces are glued as well as screwed together through the pocket holes I cut a dado joint into this one so that the other frame can fit right in there and then those will be glued together and clamped overnight this piece with the four cross members will go on the bottom right back here with this piece going on the front and again I've rounded the corners here with a router so that will be going right up here to anchor these to the walls and the ceiling I made these little brackets out of angle aluminum you can buy this stuff in a four foot length as well I cut it into one and a half inch strips drilled holes in it and then with these quarter by 20 bolts they screw right into our rivet nuts that we installed in the van all over the place in our van build when we were putting the walls up and the furring strips we also put rivet nuts all over the walls with just this in mind so that we would have something stronger to mount cabinets with so a little bit more about these brackets. For one, I painted them black because we've got this kind of black motif going on here with all these black screws and everything. I just thought it would look real nice to have the brackets painted black instead of, you know, looking like bare aluminum. The other thing, the reason I chose to go with brackets, I was struggling trying to figure out how I was going to mount these things to the wall because I was imagining cabinets like you would find in a house that are completely enclosed. They have sides, they have a back, and you drill holes in those and screw them into a stud, which you can find with a stud finder. What I was struggling with was how am I going to know exactly where to drill those holes so that they will line up perfectly with the rivet nuts that we've already installed in the van and I struggled for days with that and then I came up with this bracket idea so going with brackets made it really a lot easier because I can just install the brackets where they need to go and then I can put the frame on it which I've already measured with the string to get it the right size 
And now I can grab a pencil and go right up here through this hole and I know exactly where to drill all of these holes in the frame. So that's basically how the frame goes together, just like that. Then for the floor, this is a scrap left over, but you can buy this stuff at Lowe's or Home Depot. Four foot by two foot is really easy to work with. You can also buy it in four by eight sheets, but for me on the road in the van, a big sheet of plywood like that's difficult to work with. So I buy the little short panels. Uh, this is 3 sixteenths. I think it is um, maple plywood. And this is the scrap that I cut from this piece. So I will end up putting that on here. I'll cut another strip and there's my floor. The other thing I'm going to use this plywood for is to put the end on here to keep things from flying off of there. And to get this shape, I've got a piece of quarter inch foam core that I picked up at a craft store. You can get it at Michael's. Um, I cut it roughly to shape. And then I put it up here against the wall and I scribe the edge. And the way I do that is I hold this part of my hand, my knuckles, right against the wall like this. Put the pencil on here and I just drag it right down the wall like that which gives a nice line for where to cut. And that's what I use for my template that I'm gonna cut these out with. Okay, I got the bottom put on, and now it's just a simple matter of putting it up here. And bolting it up to these brackets. Just like that. So the last step is to put the end piece on. This is the one that I cut using that piece of foam core as a template. It's larger than it needs to be, and that was intentional. It's going to go right like that. And now I'm just going to mark right down here where it needs to be cut. I'll draw a straight line between those marks. Probably take a little bit off of this edge here and this will be ready to put on the end. And just like that, we have finished overhead cabinets. Thanks for watching, I hope this was helpful. I'd sure love it if you could give us a thumbs up. That would really help us out a lot. And subscribe. You'll see more videos like this as we put up more in the future. So until next time, thanks so much. Bye.